Georgia is a country in the South Caucasus, bordered by Russia to the north, Turkey and Armenia to the south and Azerbaijan to the east. There are two breakaway territories in the north, namely Abkhazia and South Ossetia, which are recognized only by Russia and a few other states and are not under Georgia's control. In the southwest on the border with Turkey and on the Black Sea, there is also the autonomous region of Ajaria, which has been part of Georgia since 2004. Georgia has a long coastline to the Black Sea, which, as we will see in more detail soon, opens all doors for activities related to the sea. Georgia offers a number of upsides, making it an underrated destination in my opinion. At just under 70,000 square kilometers, it is about twice the size of Switzerland. The largest cities of the country are by far the capital Tbilisi, where about 1.5 million people live, followed by the coastal city of Batumi, Kutaisi and Rustavi, each home to about 150,000 inhabitants. In total, Georgia has a population of about 3.7 million people, but the population is slightly declining at negative 0.2% annually. Since Georgia's independence from the former Soviet Union in 1991, more than 31% of Georgians have left the country, some of them to Russia. Then in 1994, 62% of the immigrants named Israel as their first destination and a significant amount also moved to Greece. Today, more than a fourth of Georgia's population lives in the capital city of Tbilisi, making it the country's economic and political center. The official language of Georgia is Georgian and Abkhazian is recognized as a regional language. Georgian belongs to the South Caucasian language families, has its own alphabet and is one of the oldest languages in the world. According to the US language difficulty scale, Georgian is ranked 4 out of 5 and is therefore considered quite difficult to learn. In Tbilisi, you can get by just fine with English, while in other parts of the country, Russian is understood, especially by older people. 84% of the inhabitants of Georgia belong to the Christian Orthodox Church, while 9.9% are Sunni Muslims. The Caucasus, as you can see from this picture, is an ethnically diverse region. Georgia is known for the mountainous landscape of the Caucasus, for Georgian cuisine and wines, for its churches, sulfur baths which we will have a closer look at in a moment, and also for advanced digitalization, for its low taxes and for being often confused with the US state of Georgia. But as we will learn in a moment, Georgia has much more than that to offer. Georgia's flag features five red crosses, one that stretches across the entire flag and one red cross in each quadrant. The five crosses stand for the five wounds of Christ, which are the two wounds on the hands and feet and the wound at the chest. The white color symbolizes innocence, purity and wisdom, while the red color is interpreted as courage, bravery, justice and love. The national drink of Georgia is chacha, the national instrument is the panduri and the wolf is the unofficial national animal. There are a lot of interesting facts about Georgia's economy. But let's take a brief look at the past. In early history, trade was highly developed. Gold, silver, copper and iron and later Georgian wine were shipped from or through Georgia. Georgia also produced a lot of iron weapons in the past thanks to its well-developed ironworking industry. As part of the Soviet Union, Georgia focused primarily on tourism on the Black Sea as well as in the Caucasus Mountains and also was a large producer of citrus fruits and tea. Mining of coal, manganese and copper also played a role. After the end of the Soviet Union and the resulting political tensions and independence struggles from Abkhazia, Ajaria and South Ossetia, production plunged by 75%. The unemployment rate in the capital was 40% and pensions at the time were at around 19 euros a month. But then a small economic miracle followed. After the soft revolution in 2003, not only was bureaucracy in the country greatly reduced, but the country was also made more business friendly. As a result, Georgia was able to work its way up from the 112th place in the Ease of Doing Business Index to 7th place today, ahead of all Scandinavian and Baltic states, as well as Germany, Switzerland and Austria. It is incredible that Georgia was able to work its way up from a country once controlled by socialism to 7th place worldwide in Ease of Doing Business. Georgia seems to have understood that creating a business-friendly environment is a prerequisite for prosperity in the country. After all, businesses pay all our wages. 
And also in the Index of Economic Freedom, Georgia ranks 12th in the world, ahead of countries like the USA, Germany, Austria, the Netherlands, Luxembourg and also the United Arab Emirates, but behind Switzerland. The fight against corruption has been extremely successful and Georgia is now considered a global role model. However, the official unemployment rate is between 10 and 15 percent and the average monthly income after social security contributions is around 250 euros per month. In case you have savings or have an income stream from your home country or the internet, then you will be able to live very well in Georgia, as we will see soon. The tax system of Georgia must also be addressed. In 2004, 12 taxes were abolished and the income tax rate was reduced, followed by another tax reform in 2011. State-owned companies such as Georgian Telecom, Tbilisi International Airport and the ports in Batumi and Poti were sold. The process of setting up a company has been greatly simplified, the number of activities requiring a permit has been reduced by a whopping 82% and the cost of terminating a work contract has been lowered. Income earned abroad does not have to be taxed and the tax burden for IT companies is at an incredible 0%. Tax rates for micro-businesses, which are companies with an annual turnover of up to 10,000 US dollars, are also tax-free and LLCs are taxed at 15%. There are legal mechanisms in place to prevent the state from arbitrarily increasing the tax rate. Georgia is considered an attractive country in terms of taxes, which is certainly an upside of this country. However, as we saw earlier, state benefits, for instance pensions, are not high. Important sectors of the country's economy are energy, agriculture, engineering, natural resources, and tourism is also a dynamic and rapidly developing sector of the country's economy. As far as energy is concerned, it is important to mention that Georgia, thanks to the Caucasus Mountains, covers practically all of its energy needs by its own hydroelectric power plants. Georgian renewable energy exports are growing and the Caucasus Mountains also provide clean drinkable tap water. Georgia's main export partners are Azerbaijan, Russia and Armenia, while the main import partners are Turkey, Russia and China. Later in this video there will be an interview with Florian Wilk. Florian lived in Tbilisi for a while, will talk about his experiences and will give useful advice to people who are interested in moving to Georgia. If you have an idea which country I should cover next, please let me know down in the comments. This video is part of a video series, which is all about moving to countries around the globe. You can find a playlist linked in the description below. But back to Georgia, what are the main upsides of moving to Georgia and what needs to be considered? Today, about 180,000 foreign immigrants live in Georgia, the majority coming from Russia, followed by Greeks, Ukrainians and Germans. Especially since the escalation of the Russo-Ukrainian war, thousands of Russians have settled down in Georgia temporarily or permanently. But what are the main upsides of moving to Georgia? Let's not begin with nature, but with the business-friendly environment mentioned earlier. If you are thinking about setting up your own business or already have one running, Georgia will turn out to be a good location. Tax rates are low as well as the cost of personnel. So it is not surprising that there are many expats in Tbilisi, which is why Georgia is also a well-known destination among digital nomads. Georgia is a very digitalized country. Practically everything is done by email and SMS, resulting in low bureaucracy. In Georgia's main cities, fiber optic connection is broadly available. But Georgia's nature must also be mentioned. Since almost 90% of the country is hilly and mountainous, Georgia is also nicknamed the Balcony of Europe. And in my opinion, this is an advantage, since the mountains offer a lot of activities and a stunning view. In the south, Georgia shares the Lesser Caucasus with Armenia and Azerbaijan, while the Greater Caucasus is shared with Russia in the north. This is where Georgia's highest point is located at, namely the Shkara at an altitude of 5201 meters above sea level. There are many alpine-like landscapes and Georgia is also home to the deepest cave in the world discovered so far, which is over 2.2 kilometers deep. 44% of the country is covered by forests, 5% of which are primary forests. 1000 species of plants are endemic to Georgia, meaning they can be found only in Georgia. 
The mountains are also home to various predators, such as brown bears, wolves, lynxes, golden jackals, and very rarely the Caucasian leopard. The Asiatic lion, Caspian tiger, and striped hyena can unfortunately no longer be found, so you probably won't encounter these predators while hiking through the Caucasian mountains. Georgia has 11 nature reserves, the largest of which was opened in 2001 with the help of Germany. However, Georgia has to deal with illegal logging in some areas. The wood is illegally exported to Turkey. Besides the mountains, Georgia also offers the Black Sea coast, which is popular among tourists. Especially the coastal city of Batumi experienced somewhat a boom in recent years since it offers a lot while being very affordable. Georgia's most important port is also located in the city that is home to 150,000 people. Among other things, oil products from Kazakhstan and Turkmenistan are imported there and agricultural products such as tea and citrus fruits are exported. Batumi has attracted international investors. Companies from Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan and Turkey, built new hotels, the beach promenade was renovated and extended to a whopping 5 kilometers, and real estate prices in the city have more than tripled since then. Let us take a look at the climate. Tbilisi has a modern climate with temperatures between negative 2 and 31 degrees. In the capital, the Bridge of Peace connects the modern city with the old town district. The city's thermal springs gave Tbilisi its name. Tbilisi stands for hot spring. According to a legend, the falcon of King Vakdan killed a pheasant in this city. The animal fell into a hot spring and was immediately cooked. The monarch decided to found a town here and call it Tbilisi, the place of the hot spring. The carbonated sulfur spring water, which is up to 46 degrees warm, bubbles out of the ground and is said to be effective against bone ailments, neurological disorders and skin diseases. Of course, without any medical guarantee. Today, only about 10 bathhouses are still in operation, but many are open 24 hours a day. Large parts of the city were restored and modernized in 2009. The country's cuisine is also part of the culture. It is known for its quality and regional diversity. Typical dishes are badrijani, basturma, shashlik, chicken stew with tomato and onion sauce, janaki and the walnut sauce bacha, chuchkela or matsoni, as well as khachapuri are also well known. I have already tried matsoni with walnuts and honey, as well as khachapuri, it is very tasty. Traditional drinks are Georgian wine, sparkling wine, brandy and chacha the national drink. Walnuts, regional fruits and vegetables are often used in dishes. Especially when guests arrive, food is served generously in abundance. Georgians are internationally known for their hospitality. How much does it cost living in Georgia? If you live of 3000 US dollars a month in Dallas, Texas, you will need about 1200 US dollars a month for the same quality of life in Tbilisi. This makes living in Tbilisi about 60% less expensive than living in Dallas. The low cost of living can be interpreted as another upside of moving to Georgia. However, average salaries in Georgia are also very low. But in spite of all these upsides, there are also some drawbacks that you will need to consider. Especially in more rural areas, but also in some parts of the capital, poverty still is present. Incomes and pensions are very low, which is why many young Georgians leave the country, at least temporarily. The geopolitical situation in Georgia must also be taken into account. Georgia has two breakaway territories and Russia to the north, which may lead to conflicts in the future. In the south, Azerbaijan and Armenia are present, two countries that were at war in 2020. Georgia and also Tbilisi are located in a seismically active zone. That is why earthquakes occur from time to time. In 2002, there was one that severely damaged 18,000 homes and forced almost 70,000 people into homelessness. Let us continue with interviewing Florian. When were you in Georgia for the last time? How long did you live there and which parts of the country have you seen? Hi and thank you very much for having me for this video. My name is uh, Florian Wilk and I am uh, living in Georgia as my second place uh, of residence uh, since uh, four years in the meantime. And uh, my main place of residence is Cyprus. I'm originally from Germany, but 10 years ago I moved to Cyprus. 
and uh, yeah georgia is as i said like my second home and i'm happy to share some experience hopefully i can give you some useful tips if you are thinking uh, or planning to move to georgia first time i was in georgia was like four years ago i moved from uh, i was flying from cyprus from lanaka to kutaisi and uh, explored this town first of all um, i had a good impression actually um, there's a lot of potential good dynamic like things are developing fast uh, but i decided that uh, kutaisi is a very small town and it's not so interesting as a place of residence it's more like a post-industrial city um, and uh, i didn't like it so much so i went on to tbilisi or tiflis how it's also called in, in some languages and uh, there i liked it much more it's a good size of a city it's 1.4 million people living there you also have their growing expat community it's not by the sea which some people may see as a disadvantage but uh, with the train in a few hours you are at the black sea in batumi so it's not really a minus for me and um, i prefer to have a big city with a lot of um, let's say entertainment option opportunities restaurants yeah especially when you're for business there you have much more um, choice of staff of properties uh, and uh, it's no comparison with batumi or kutaisi so then i finally moved uh, with my second residence let's say to georgia and uh, i decided to uh, open an office there to help um, other expats uh, to um, start their business to um, open bank accounts uh, to make their immigration and um, i really like the potential in uh, georgia and the regulations there they are very entrepreneur friendly uh, it's a very fair tax system a very straightforward tax system um, yeah and that made it easy for me uh, to decide to open a, a office in tbilisi and uh, that's what i did and uh, now i have a team of like seven eight people uh, working for me there and uh, i come and go to Tbilisi from Cyprus um, and uh, spend a lot of time there. What did you like most about your life in Georgia? Of course I had the chance uh, to explore many many places in Georgia. Yeah? Every weekend I would go out to different tours uh, or just drive to the mountains or to the seaside and I have to say it's really a wonderful nature. If you like the nature, if you like the mountains, it's a really beautiful country um, and it has a great cuisine the food is really awesome um, it's like a very um, huge variety and um, it's unbelievable uh, cuisine you should definitely try and of course the the wines georgia is very well known for the wines the wine culture and the long long tradition it is really unique and you should definitely uh, not miss uh, the wines uh, in georgia what did you miss most from your life in Germany? Yeah, I mean, Georgia is really uh, a very interesting country and you can, um, let's, let's say, communicate with many people in English. But of course, um, when it comes to um, a language, there is a big barrier. Like um, younger generation, they speak English, but also mainly in Tbilisi. If you are leaving the city, it's very difficult to communicate with people. So um, from Cyprus, I was used to speak with Eng um, English with everybody so there's no limitations um, and of course in Germany it's something different you can speak in your mother tongue with everyone so um, this is really something uh, which is a little bit difficult there's really a language barrier of course when you speak Russian it's easier especially in the older generation they speak Russian um, with Georgian it's a different story of course I will say something about this in a moment um, but the language barrier to speak in English or in your mother tongue of course this is something um, you don't have that so much uh, in um, georgia uh, also of course um, cultural things like um, theater or uh, concerts there is many but um, it's a different uh, type of what you expect uh, in germany for example this was something personally what i um, miss a little bit uh, when i'm in georgia but at the end of the day there is a good airport in Tbilisi connecting um, uh, Georgia with Germany or from Kutaisi you can fly it also to many destinations like Cyprus and many European cities so it's a well connected um, place with very good flight connections. Did you learn some Georgian? Uh, I never 
took any Georgian language course because I think it's really a beautiful language but very very hard to learn as a foreigner because it has a different alphabet, different sounds which are very difficult to imitate uh, for me. So uh, I think it's a big challenge to learn the language. It's very good and very helpful if you know Russian in Georgia. Uh, because many, many people speak uh, Russian, the younger generation also English. Uh, but Georgian for me personally was uh, not a choice uh, to learn because I understood from the first moment that it's going to be a very hard challenge. Um, and um, I think in my personal opinion, it's better to learn Russian than Georgian or for people who have not the best English level to improve the English level first. Um, and then consider maybe if you are planning to live there a longer time or you really get deep into the Georgian culture uh, and then it can make sense of course later on to learn the language. What advice would you give people who are interested in moving to Georgia? I would suggest um, definitely to have a closer look at Georgia, uh, spend some time, maybe a month or two in the country, uh, stay in different places. Many people tell me they want to move to Batumi. Um, but I believe um, when you spend actual time in Batumi that uh, you might find it a little bit small. Um, you have the seaside there, but to live, I really think Tbilisi is a much nicer place. Of course, it's personal preference, um, but uh, I would really suggest to stay in different areas of the country, to really live there like a local, let's say, yeah, and then to make your final decision um, if you can imagine to spend there longer time and if you like it i think it's a beautiful country it has a lot of potential um, also business wise and uh, it makes a lot of sense to consider georgia as your uh, place of um, residence if you need any help with uh, immigration bank account opening company setup accounting um, me and my company we are um, happy to help um, and you can just um, send me an email and uh, the contact details will be below this video and I'm really looking forward to your request and I'm happy to help you with your setup and your structure in Georgia. All right, then thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share my experience about Georgia. I hope you enjoyed and have a great time in Georgia. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you Florian for taking time to join this interview. For more informative videos about Florian's life in Georgia, take a look at his YouTube channel linked in the description below. Florian makes informative videos about Georgia and Cyprus, so if you are interested in moving to one of these countries, then go check out his channel. But what needs to be done in order to move to Georgia? Residents from countless countries worldwide can visit Georgia visa-free for up to a whole year. This comes in handy as it allows you to experience Georgia on your own before deciding to move to Georgia. Georgia offers different visa categories that allow you to stay in Georgia for a longer period of time. For more information, take a look at the website linked in the video description.